Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. In the news tonight, Mbani Marama heads out at Rumbuka over false accusation. Sadelpa to end all CEO contracts. And FEO tells voters to double check before voting. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Fiji First Leader Borenge Mbaini Marama says Sidelpa leader Sipi Veni Rambuka is making empty accusations without any credible evidence. This after Rambuka accused Mbaini Marama's late brother Ratati Modi Mbaini Marama of owing money to the old National Bank of Fiji. Mbaini Marama says Rambuka is personalizing everything to get votes and come into power. Pranita Prakash reports. He's a confused person and he personalizes everything. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Baini Marama says there is no truth in the Sodelpa leader's claim that his brother's name is on the list of debtors of the old NBF. Well, he said that he's got a, a record of my brother's debt. He may have a record of my brother's debt given to him by the police. That was 1990, I think it was 1996. But uh, the record that Reserve Bank has about the debtors uh, my brother's name is not on the list, which means he has paid his debt. That should have been the record that he had, not the record that uh, the initial record. Rambuka today maintained his statement despite not having shown any evidence. He says he has documents to back up his claims. Uh, no, I think he's, uh, he went to the Reserve Bank to find out uh, uh, proof or otherwise of what I said. And he was probably told that uh, it's not true. I can substantiate my claim also with a document. So he may, he may have one document, I have another document. Mine is from the uh, report by the Commission of Police. FBC News has managed to verify that Timothy Beni Marama's name is not on the list that is with the Reserve Bank. Beni Marama says Rambuka is personalizing issues because he has no legs to stand on as Fiji gets ready to vote next week. He says Rambuka does not want to admit that he was the reason for the demise of the NPF. The reason he's come up with that is because it's very personal. Because he's been uh, put in a corner about uh, the destruction of our National Bank of Fiji uh, in his, uh, during his uh, prime ministership. And because of that, because he was put in a corner, he gets very personal. And that's why he came up with my brother's name, not knowing that my brother had paid his debt. Benny Marama says National Bank of Fiji broke down because of Rambuka's leadership. The crash of the National Bank of Fiji in the late 1990s remained the biggest financial scandal in Fiji's history. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The war of words continues between Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama and leader for the Social Democratic Liberal Party Siti Veni Rambuka. In the latest rebuke, the Fiji First Party leader has called out Rambuka's proposal to remove all senior government executives and chief executive officers from government statutory bodies. Mbaini Marama says a Sadelpa government brings nothing but chaos and disenfranchises many Fijians. Maggie Boyle reports. In a campaign rally this week, the Sadelpa leader making it clear that should they form the next government, an overhaul of the civil service would be immediate. On the uh, appointment of uh, senior executives in government and uh, government-owned entities, uh, I believe, and it is a universal uh, uh, practice, that uh, appointments are co-terminous with the appointing authority. If they are appointed by this government, the appointment uh, comes to an end. Moments later, Rambuka says the honorable thing would be for all those currently in these positions to resign. We can change them. We may change some uh, immediately. Uh, on the other hand, some of them we may retain. In response, the Fiji First Leader says this is the narrow-mindedness of what a Sodelpa government would represent. And he's talked about uh, removing everyone, even if they're doing good. If they, even if they in a position to bring about... Uh, uh, the, the raising of standards of, uh, of living, they have to be removed because they're Muslims. Most of these people 
holding these posts are there not because they're Muslims. Because they're there because of merit. They can do the job. Politics aside, Bainu Marama says with Sir Delpa's policies, Fiji will be worse off. They bring nothing but chaos and then bring nothing but trouble for us. And if they ever enter, God forbid, God forbid, if they ever get into governments, Fiji goes down the drain. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this because of politics, I'm just telling you, telling the people of Fiji the facts. Four days remain before Fiji heads to the polls. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. With only five days left for Fijians to head to the polls, some politicians have fearlessly resorted to racial vilification, bringing back the old style of politics to sway votes. Recently, National Federation Party candidate Charanjit Singh has taken a swipe against the Gujarati community, particularly businesses, claiming they've been channeling funds into the Fiji First for campaign, but with the personal gain. Rachel Nath with the details. A tit for tat between NFP candidate Charanjit Singh and Gujarati businessmen have erupted following comments of racial vilification. Fiji First has close to eight million dollars for campaigning. Where did the funds come from? What has happened is all these big Gujarati businesses, especially hardware companies, have openly given one to three hundred thousand dollars. Why they have given? Is because Ayaz Said Kayum, along with Vorenge Mbainimarama, have gone to these people's houses and have demanded for the funds. Support any party, at discretion of the person. The company, he knows very well, unless his company is supporting NFP, which is a totally illegal, any director or any owner of the company personally can give donation to any party of their preference. It's not the company that is giving. Either he's mistaken or he hasn't read the rules right. The Lambasa entrepreneur claims these Gujarati businesses have been channeling funds to the Fiji first. If you see all these big hardware companies during Tropical Cyclone Winston, they got huge sales. In one way, they are given hundred thousands to Fiji first, but they also made huge profits. Government called the tender where all hardware companies were invited and given equal chance to participate. And all companies that tendered went through a fair and a thorough process to be selected as a hardware supplier. The dirty tactics of politics has once again reared its ugly head, something which Fiji has had long history with. The question tonight is whether some old politicians will continue to use the race card just to rake in those votes at the expense of innocent Fijians. Rachel Nath, FBC News. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama says there is no such thing as a two-man show in his government. Mbaini Marama, while receiving tremendous support from the Narewa village in Nandi, says the rumour mill needs to stop, as most politicians are using their election campaign to spread false news. Philippe Naikaso with the details. Fiji First Leader Vorenge Mbaini Marama says the rumours of a two-man government are ridiculous. They usually use this term, it's a two-man army in your government, please can you clarify on this? I really don't get this two-man army, but I know the reason why this rumor is being spread, and it's because my right-hand man, ISI Kayum, is Muslim, and that's why this is usually brought up. Badi Marama also told the villagers that in previous governments, it was only a one-man show. These villagers have also indicated that they want the current prime minister to continue for another term. I'm going to be voting for Frank and his Fiji First Party. This is the reason why I would like to vote for Frank and his party. It's because of the development that we can see here in the West and also because of uh, the care that is got for the kids. Benny Marama should be the Prime Minister again because his government has brought up a lot of development around the country. Ben Marama. I want Benny Marama to be the Prime Minister again because the free education he introduced has assisted many Fijian families. Meanwhile, the Fiji First Party will hold a family fun day in Lotoko tomorrow where the party is expected to announce its manifesto. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. We now cross live to our West reporter, Felipe Naikaso, who is at the Fiji First Family Fund Day in Bar. Felipe, any indication yet on when the Fiji First Manifesto will be announced with just two days away from the blackout period?
Well, Jackie, there is a high possibility that the Fiji First Party will launch their manifesto here at the bar market grounds, and that will happen probably later this evening. The Fiji First Party's manifesto is one of the most anticipated manifestos by all Fijians, including political parties, as they are the only political party that is yet to launch their manifesto. And Jackie, thousands of people have gathered here at the bar market grounds to listen to what the Fiji First Party will do or will offer offer if they voted back into government for another four-year term. The candidates have also spoken uh, on their side on what they are planning to do and what they will do if they also voted into a government. The uh, general secretary of the party, ISZ Kayum, has also had his say. And one of the main things that they have been pushing for is to vote for their party leader, Vorenge Bainamurama. And currently on stage, uh, the leader of the Fiji First Party, uh, Mr. Bainamurama, is addressing the supporters of the Fiji First Party, Jackie. The Fijian Elections Office is urging voters to make use of their text platform 1500 to check their polling venues. This comes as during pre-poll, some voters turned up at the wrong venue to cast their vote. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sinim says the texting platform will help voters avoid any confusion they may have in regards to their polling venues. Kritika Kumar reports. Some pre-poll voters this week were turned back by the election officials after their names did not appear on the voters list. In the event, as I said, if the name of the voter is not on the list, you should use the 1500 platform to find out where you are registered to vote and then you will be able to uh, go and vote at the location where your name is listed. Another issue faced by the elections office is that in some cases people are not turning up to vote. It is a voluntary voting system. The FEO cannot force anybody to come and vote. Uh, but uh, uh, we will try and do some surveys to try and ascertain uh, the reason why people did not turn up to vote. Sanyan says with pre-polling ending tomorrow, those who have registered should make an effort to cast their vote. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Pre-polling will be completed in the Western Division tomorrow. Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sinim says this division is the only one left given the biggest amount of pre-poll voters there. Sinim says pre-polling in the other three divisions should finish by 8 tonight. He says a total of 502 voters are expected to cast their votes tomorrow. Still to come, more than 40,000 calls made on National Helpline. And driver pleads not guilty in double death crash. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malaka Leloma, go in Nakas on the Wagarong and Bula Fip, Nabondo and a Serre. Why I was it says a Lombasa and the Teleta in Wagarong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and Serre. We have the Tumeli, a Kuana Town of Hinatoka, Teleta in Wagarong and Bula Fem, Nabondo and a Serre. More than 42,000 calls have been made on the National Child Helpline 1325 since its launch in April 2015. Speaking during the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect Celebration in Suva today, President Major General Ritai Chiochi Kondrote says the introduction of Charlie the Child Helpline Turtle will encourage more children to report on issues affecting them. Kelly Vathala reports. The issue of violence and abuse against children have been making headlines for quite some time and the Ministry of Children has also noted an increase in reporting. It recently confirmed an accumulated total of 42,705 calls to the Child Helpline, of which 5,113 were genuine calls, 8,413 were prank calls, 10,230 were silent calls, 16,337 testing calls and 2,612 voice email calls. Child Services Assistant Director Ella Tukutukulevu says there's been increase in child abuse cases of various forms. There's all types of abuse from sexual abuse, physical abuse, uh, neglect to abandonment. Uh, but then there are also uh, cases where I think families just need uh, financial assistance. The new initiative, Charlie the Child Helpline Turtle, is aimed at encouraging children to call. The Child Helpline is used mostly by adults to report on child 
abuse cases. Now, this new concept is to encourage children to use the National Child Helpline to call and voice their concerns. The National Child Helpline is currently run in partnership between the Ministry of Women and Children and the Medical Services Pacific. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. It took Year 2 students of International Primary School only 40 minutes to collect 22 bags of rubbish near ANZ Stadium and Mysuva Park this morning. This is their third cleanup campaign in the last two months. It's all an effort to advocate the importance of keeping Fiji surroundings clean. Savara Thumbo caught up with the students this morning. The students wanted to take some action after learning theory about the marine environment. Their slogan is for Fiji. It was very fun. We found lots of plastic and styrofoam and glass bottles. So, um, we found lipstick. We found plastic bags. We found lots of big, weird stuff today. We found this type of couch. They felt really hot, some of them. Like they had been here for like a hundred years. Students believe it's important everyone, especially young people, pick up rubbish and discard it in the appropriate bins for the betterment of our country. We've had four action days and three beach cleanups. So we've had the t-shirts made and we've done three beach cleanups and we've done a mural at school and we're going to present to the school and tell them what we're doing to hopefully get the rest of the school on board with us. The school hopes to expand its campaign to involve stakeholders in the overall Clean Up Fiji campaign. FBC News. A 30-year-old driver alleged to have caused the deaths of two women in Valilevu Nasinu in September pleaded not guilty to the charges in the High Court today. William Ratoto, who received his license in July, faces two counts of manslaughter and one count of breaching the zero alcohol limit and one count of dangerous driving occasioning grievous harm. It's alleged while driving a company van, Ratoto caused the deaths of two sisters at Kanade Road in Valilevu on September 16th. The matter has been adjourned to December 4th. Ratoto has been remanded in custody. Residents of Lamy are now able to access free internet following the launch of Walesi's free Wi-Fi today. Walesi Director Robert Khan says people living in Lamy can now log on to the Walesi platform to register their details and enjoy 60 minutes of internet for free every day. This is the 13th site for the digital initiative, which is also being filtered to block any adverse content. The free Wi-Fi hotspot was an initiative announced in the 2018-2019 national budget with an allocation of $40 million for increased speed in public Wi-Fi hotspots around Fiji. You get a better connectivity, better technology, and more importantly, it will be used for educational purposes uh, in, in, uh, in all the areas uh, across Fiji. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Frank Lomani is the only local player named in the Flying Fijians run-on team to face Scotland on Sunday. He'll have more on that, but before that, here is Rachel with all the day's business updates. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Fijian Organic about to hit the market. And in growing Fiji, approved notices to lease for informal settlers. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic hits, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Dino. I'm from Outriga, Coral Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classics. In business tonight, six companies are now certified under the new Fijian organic brand. Launching the brand, Trade Minister Fayaz Koya says brands such as Fijian Grown, Fijian Sewn and Fijian Crafted are being increasingly used. Koya says the Fijian organic brand is a new inclusion and gives recognition to local producers who make an effort to use organic farming methods. He says there is a huge demand around the world for organic foods and people are willing to pay a little more for, for this. 
The Fijian Organic uh, is, is certified and it's based on either recognized international standards uh, certification or certification under the Pacific uh, Guarantee Scheme with POITCOM. The aim really, ladies and gentlemen, is to get farmers and manufacturers and SMEs certified organic at a very minimal cost and with less administrative burden. The GN Holdings Group has recorded a growth after profit of 7% for the three months ending September 30th. The group's profit after tax stood at 6.8 million million compared to 6.4 million for the same period last year. Chair Adrian Sofil says the positive result is due to the good performance by the group companies, particularly RB Group and Basic Industries. Sofil adds revenue increased by 6% compared to the same period last year. And we now join Sanifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the exchange market. The US dollar gained against its major peers today as the Federal Reserve kept interest rates steady. This reaffirms the Federal Reserve's monetary tightening stance, setting the stage for another rate hike in December. Meanwhile, the Reserve Bank of Australia issued their latest monetary policy statement early this morning. The central bank maintained a steady monetary policy stance in general, saying the economy was performing well, but in a bullish statement, the Reserve Bank of Australia said economic growth will peak a little stronger than earlier expected at 3.5% by December 2018. The Reserve Bank of Australia says it will continue to monitor the slow growth in household incomes, an environment of high household debt, and the impact of falling house prices as it considers the next rates move. That's it from HFC Bank for this week, Vinaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. The Fiji dollar rose against all the other currencies we cover, showing solid gains against the Kiwi and Aussie dollar, but showing a losing ground to the rapidly increasing US dollar and the PNG Kina. Looking at the commodities market, oil continued to fall, closing near $60 a barrel. Gold flat fell to close at 1220 an ounce, and silver was down as well at 1434 per ounce. And in Going Fiji tonight, 62 leases approval notices were given to residents of Nandovi settlement outside Nandi town by the lands minister yesterday. The remaining approval notices will be issued to respective tenants once the verifications are met. Minister Freyaz Koya says the approval notices received by the informal settlers creates an improved sense of security. Koya says a total of 400 approval notices have been issued for informal settlements since the for program inception. And that's a wrap from the business desk for this week. Jamie joins you now with sports. Thank you, Rachel, and good evening in sports tonight. Set Tatui Duvu to debut for Flying Fijians. And Samu Kirevi back in Wallaby's starting lineup. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. Singatoka Mitch FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mitch FM rocks in Lombasa. I'm Sona Min. Osori Jackson. Mitch FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singer Line. Mitch FM is hot in Lombasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson, Osori. I love listening to Mitch FM here in Osori. Mitch FM is hot. Mitch FM is hot. The Fiji Airways men's sevens team won its first pool match at the Oceania Sevens, thumping the Solomon Islands 47-0 at NZ Stadium in Suba. The Gareth Weber coach side led 21-0 at halftime. Skipper Kalyoni Nasoko, Waisea Nadungu, Alessio Nanduba, Napoleon Ratu, Benjamin Wata, Filimoni Botitu and Speedstar Apenisa Dakaumbalabu all reached their tries in the match. The next game is against Papua New Guinea at 8.06 p.m. tonight. Meanwhile, the Fijian 7 side lost to New Zealand 27-0 in its last pool match. Early in the day, they beat the Cook Islands 21-7 and defeated New Caledonia 46-5. France-based uh, Seta Tuiduvu will debut for the Fiji Airways Flying Fijians in the Northern Hemisphere Test Match against Scotland on Sunday. 
Flying Fijians coach John McKee has named Tui Dubu at fullback, while Metuisela Talimbula makes his return on the wing. Semiran Randra and Tsale Watumbo make up the, the midfields, while Frank Lomani is at halfback and Ben Volovol at fly half. Sam Matavesi also makes his return, but at the hooker's position, while in form Edinburgh forward, Vilame Mata will start at number eight. Meanwhile, Flying Fijians coach John McKee is confident the squad he has named is more than capable of beating Scotland. But while there are a few notable absentees from the squad, Scottish coach uh, Gregor Townsend has also identified a few notable threats. Marcel Prasad has more. Filling the shoes of veteran fullback Kenny Morimorivalu won't be easy for debutant Seta Tuiduvu. I oh, said team, but he certainly fitted in, fitted in well for his first first time selected with the squad and and, and is looking looking pretty good in the fullback position. With Nemani Nandolo out and Joshua Tuisova dropped, coach John Maki believes Metuisela Talimbula is the best available player for the wings position. In this combination, he 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 we probably see him more as a as a wing centre, but, but, but he, he's another player who put his hand up at as the fullback. The Scottish side, which is familiar with Leone Nakarawa, are aware of the challenges they can face from the offload king. The Flying Fijians will have to do some extra work on the field as they have failed to beat Scotland at Murrayfield in their last three meets. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. The Australian rugby side has received a boost with the return of powerful Fijian centre Samu Kirevi for their test against Wales on Sunday. Ahead of the long-awaited clash against England this weekend, New Zealand rugby coach Steve Hansen says the buzz around the All Blacks camp is bigger than it was before the Lions tour. The Vodafone National Club Championship Zone playoff started at the Fiji FA Academy ground. Nisinu's Friends United made a powerful start, thumping Nakasi Lions 7-0 in the first match. Suvers combined brothers, which had the services of Laisinia Raura, defeated Muindun of Tailevu Naita City by 1-0, and Buret FC beat Nabuso 3-0. In the Western Zone, Nandi's Gandhi Lions thumped Nandranga's Cameroon 9-0, while Yala Levu beat Silver Sports six goals to one. Matches continue tomorrow. Olivier Giroud's lone goal against Bozirov put the Blues into the last 32 of the Europa League this morning. The French international scored through a header in the second spell of the match. In today's Play of the Day, Patton Kazaya goes uh, pin-seeking at the par-4 sixth hole in the opening round of the 2018 Mayakoba Golf Classic, holding his approach for the, his second straight eagle on the day. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful, a look at the world's shortest flight. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One, Radio Fiji One, New media, Facebook's Portal Plus and Portal Smart Displays connect you with friends and family even when you live far away. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello to you and to the weekend. It's Friday in the hood. Hope you're excited for it. And this weather just doubles our excitement. With all that sunshine, it was pretty amazing actually, really gave out the weekend vibes. Now, taking a look in the west, quite mild, the sun was glowing, just perfect for an outdoor day. Eastwards from Pak Suva, sunny right through. And up north, so hot with persistent sunshine as well, dried your pickles, well definitely the day for it. At sea, it still winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 8.40 p.m. and low tide at 3.07 a.m. Sunrise at 6.23. For tomorrow, after so much sunshine, light showers will swing by just to say hello for a bit before it flies away. 
Tomorrow's temps, majority centers will stay cool at 29 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, after a few light sprinkles, it should be good. So have a great weekend. And it's back to the lovely Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fijian Pulse tonight, we asked, are you happy with the starting lineup announced by Flying Fijians coach John McKee for the match against Scotland? Of course, I'm uh, happy with the team because uh, they have uh, the team that uh, he selected is uh, very talented and they, most of them are very young. I think it's a good team, but it depends on uh, the referee. I'm so happy to see names like Frank Lamani named in the squad because he played so well in the draw team. The team named in the Fiji squad will take us to another level and win the game. I think um, whatever John McCain has um, decided, he has confidence in his boys. We're playing against Scotland, but I, I have faith in the players and John McKee and the players. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, the world's shortest flight, a tiny hop between two remote British islands. The record for the fastest flight is 53 seconds. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Mbaini Marama hits out at Rumbuka over false accusation, Sadelpa to end all CEO contracts, and Defio tells voters to double-check before voting. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, this week we're asking, are you prepared to pay your house help and gardener $5 an hour? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day taken by our very own Eleanor Tarangai View. The beautiful shot was taken at Vuna in Taviuni. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. The team and I have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. मैं नवनीत नन नंबोलुम बुआ से जैसे प्रेनी नोट मशहूर है वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंगर टोकर टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देशे रग्बी फेम से वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू फेम से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन